How's everybody doing in lockdown three? So first of all, how's everybody doing in lockdown three? Got some thumbs up, bored, yeah. You can tell me some of the rules that we've got in place around restrictions. I'd like to think some of you know some. Can't leave your home unless it's for essentials, yep. Only essential shops open. No mixing except support bubbles. Stay at home, shop alone if possible. You can go on a walk or a run. Stay in and watch Netflix, yeah. You can meet one other person outside, yes. Um, and what can you do with that one other person? Exercise, yeah. So obviously hairdressers, barbers, beauty salons, nail bars um, cannot open, but we can do training online again, which is good because it means that you can get um, some practice in. It means that you can, if you've got theory to do, you can get your theory done. So you're ready to take the tests when you're back at work and training. Um, so it is, you know, it is quite a good thing. So one of the big things around um, COVID and lockdowns is mental health. Um, and I just really want to have a bit of a check in with everybody um, to kind of really see how how you're all doing. And if there's anything that you have found that you're doing to kind of keep your spirits up. Yeah, keep your spirits up, um, keep you occupied. Um, has anybody taken up any new hobbies or has any got any tips and tricks um, for sort of people's mental health? I mean, I guess we could start by saying who's feeling a bit meh this lockdown? Hands up or a yes in the chat box. Yeah, missing your friends. Yeah, Von said lots of walking. So who's found a new kind of, yeah, so Lizzie has found a new routine. How do you, um, how have you made your routine, Lizzie? Online shopping, Lucy. Yeah, I wish that um, I could stop online shopping. <laughs> Long walks to take up the day and watching things for distraction, baking. Is anyone doing Zoom calls or um, FaceTime calls with friends? Yeah, workouts, yeah. I know that I had a Zoom call with my friend on Saturday night um, and we both had dinner together on Zoom, which was a bit weird, but it was quite nice. And we were on there till about 11 o'clock and it almost kind of felt a little bit better. Um, and like I was actually with someone. And I think that's really important. Get up at a normal time. Vaughn, I think that's so important. Um, <laughs> making cocktails help. If you're over 18, Magdalene, Madalena. Um, yeah, so getting up at a normal time is really important because actually, you know, we are going to have to go um, back to normal at some point and keeping in that routine really helps. Um, I think that's one of the things about these being at nine o'clock in the morning. I have to get up early and make myself look vaguely presentable. Um, and uh, you have to get up as well. Obviously we don't see you because you have your cameras off, but um, you know, it is just the fact of being up at nine, you know, four, nine o'clock. Anybody started any new hobbies? I ordered, 
a um I'm not very good at crafts and I thought what can I do that is kind of like crafts because crafts are really good for your mental health because it gives you something to focus on you know when you complete it it's an achievement and so I was like right I want to do some crafts what can I do pom-poms so I brought a book and it was how to make loads of different pom-poms like animals and things and I ordered some wool and I done one and I've not done any more Oh, Charlotte, yeah, you're working and homeschooling and you started reading. Anyone else? Any of the boys got any comments? Have you been doing anything different? Exercise? Good. FIFA? Well, In the summer it was gardening and now knitting. Oh, exciting. I'm not very good at that kind of thing at all. Find it hard to motivate yourself at home. Yeah. It is hard, but if I could say one thing to you over the next couple of days, think about something that you can do, just one thing a day even if it is just watching Netflix, but there's a certain thing that you're going to watch. Um, I am really into true crime and serial killers. Um, so uh, on Netflix recently, I've watched um, this thing called The Investigator. I've watched The Ripper. Um, and there's so many good things. And like, it, because it's real life, it is actually really interesting. Um, but if there's a certain thing that you like to watch, I'm sure there's lots of things on there. Okay, so, yeah, Demi's our girl. Okay, I'll have a look. The Ripper is very good. Um, and actually, for me, uh, there was, I mean, I'd heard of it, but um, I hadn't, I didn't know lots of things and I didn't know there was the Reclaim the Night Marches were because of that and I'd heard of those. Um, so it's very interesting. Right, so. Um, the other thing, which I think is a really good thing to do, and I'm just going to share my screen. Okay. And this is only a minute long, and this is about things changing. One reason we struggle so much in our mind, and very often in our lives, is that we're resistant to change. We may believe that we really like change, that we don't like things when they're always the same. But the mind tends to hold on. It likes security. It likes certainty. So whenever something is changing, it's somewhat threatening to the mind, and hence a struggle. But of course, everything is changing, all of the time, in our mind, in our body, all around us. There's nothing that stays the same. And of course, time itself is a constantly shifting sea, one moment after the next, always different, never the same. And any idea that we might have of a future moment, that's just an idea. Nothing more than that. If we can get comfortable with this idea of change, of nothing staying the same, then the mind can be at ease. We're no longer trying so hard to cling on to that sense of stability and security. Instead, the mind is free. It's in understanding this idea of change that we experience Okay, so I think the reason I wanted to um, share that really was just to say, you know, things are always changing and we're not going to be the snoring pugs are back. Um, we're not going to be stuck in this lockdown forever. Um, and yes, it might be, you know, for quite a long time again, but we will get back to normality and things will, you know, eventually go back to how they were. Um, so I just want to have a little catch up today on or recap on what we done last time.
British values. Who can tell me what the four fundamental British values are? And you can either type it in the box or if you feel brave enough, you can turn your camera on. Democracy, rule of law, mutual respect, individual liberty. Brilliant, I am very impressed. So who can tell me what democracy is? The right to vote for parliament, government system, anyone else? What's the opposite of democracy? Charlotte and Jess, if that's Jess from, um, yeah, dictatorship, brilliant Hayden. Okay, um, and what about rule of law? E and D is not one of the British values. It's kind of part of one, but it's not actually one. Okay, so rule of law. What is the rule of law? Following the laws to keep everyone safe, yep. No one is above the law, yep. Okay, um, and individual liberty, being able to think and do things freely without judgment, yeah, within the law, brilliant. Yeah, right to believe and act freely, yeah. And the other one is um, mutual respect and tolerance. Everybody is treated equally, yeah. Be respectful and tolerant of people's choices and beliefs. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, and who can tell me about prevent? Yes, well done, Beatrice, that is correct. Um, and what kind of signs would we look for if we thought vulnerable people were being radicalized? Change in behavior, change in mood, scared to go out. Yeah. And if you suspected um, somebody was being radicalised, what would you do? Ask them how they are. Yeah. What else could you do? Tell a teacher. Yeah. Because what the teacher can do is they can then um, escalate that to safeguarding officer. Um or if it's really bad yet, yeah, it could be a call to the police. Brilliant. Tell me about safeguarding. What kind of things um, would fall under um, safeguarding? Abuse. What kind of abuse, India? Yeah, physical, mental, cyberbullying. Yeah, looking after and do it. So are we saying with that one, somebody that's like a young carer or just that say, oh, safeguarding officers look after and deal with people that are struggling and potentially something that could escalate. Yeah, neglect at home. It could be all sorts of things. It could be from as small as, you know, working um, late night in the salon, and then having to get the bus home in the dark on their own um, and walk quite far to a bus stop, that's a safeguarding issue because is it safe from somebody to walk from the salon to that bus stop and be on their own that late at night in the dark? Um, or it could be more serious things. Okay. And who is your safeguarding officer? Yeah, me. Um, and then we also have Lucy who does your reviews. Um, she, so there's Lucy, Sam and Claire, and they are all safeguarding champions. So they are also all trained. And if I'm not around, they are around too. Okay. So that's it for today. Um, no real 
learning as such, just a bit of a check in um, to see how everybody is and recap ready for moving forward. Thank you. For more videos, make sure to click subscribe.